addition to being a scientist, the role of conservation is sometimes calls one to be an educator, a leader, a role model, and even a politician, but most importantly, an advocate for those who can't speak for themselves. This was very much the case on the Tibetan Plateau when Schaller began his research there in 1985. The Tibetan Plateau is like nowhere else on Earth. Miles and miles of land barely touched by human hands, as far as the eye can see. Wildlife plentiful. One can only imagine what a chronicler of wildlife like George Schaller felt to find himself in the middle of such a place. He first arrived there in 1985 to document the lives of the plateau's large predators, the snow leopard, lynx, and Tibetan brown bear, as well as six other large mammals, including the Tibetan antelope, or chiru, and the wild yak. But in researching chiru, he discovered something startling. For years, people purchased luxurious shawls called chatushas, made of wool from an unknown source. The shawls bore a price tag of anywhere from $2,000 to $15,000. But it wasn't until Schaller's research that a secret of the fashion industry was exposed, that the wool came from Chiru, and tens of thousands were being slaughtered to satisfy this fashion craze. In fact, three to five Chiru would be slaughtered for every shawl produced. With the help of fashion industry icon Liz Claiborne and her foundation, Schaller promoted anti-poaching efforts, as well as the protection of Chiru breeding and calving grounds by fighting for the establishment of the Chungtung Reserve in 1993, the second largest protected area in the world at over 130,000 square miles. And his fondness for this wild space and the creatures that call it home continues. With a research mission to Tibet under his belt in 2007, Schaller has more plans to return. The uh, Chira research, very important. How was it, uh, how did you appeal to somebody like Liz Claiborne to stop using these chatouches or making those part of the fashion industry? Oh, Liz Claiborne Art Urtenberg Foundation has had great interest in wildlife and wildlife conservation. So they helped to fund the project and also help alert the fashion industry that is not responsible to uh, help the killing of Tibetan antelope, which mo nobody's ever heard of other than the nice wool in the shawls. Was there no, people didn't know. I mean, in, in most instances, people understand you might shear an animal to get the wool. Was it that you had to tell them this isn't what's happening, these animals actually have oh, to be killed to get the wool? Correct, they didn't even know what species the wool came from, uh, which was the first step, and there, the, the wool hairs are so short you can't shear it and still weave it. And it's woven in cashmere because nobody else knew how to do it. But what's wonderful about that whole region is the Chinese government has been very concerned about protecting it. So they set up the one reserve, then contiguous reserve. And at present, we have one area about 250,000 square miles, that's the size of Texas, uh, as legally protected area. It's a conservation area and that nomads live in part of it, but there is legal protection and half of it has no people at all. A year and a half ago in winter, I drove west to east across the northern part, all at 16, 17,000 feet, and in a thousand miles, hey, not one single person and all sorts of wildlife. It's nice to know there's still places like that in the world, and that is what you're fighting for. That's when you came across wolves there, is that correct? Oh, the wolves there are wonderful, because they, most of them have never seen a person before, mm -hmm. so they're not afraid. They'll come up to camp, or you can go up to them next when they're on a kill and watch them very closely, and that always makes you feel good when animals accept you, just like the gorillas. Uh, we have an email question. We'll again, remind you to email or call in your questions for Dr. Schaller. Uh, also on the Tibetan Plateau, uh, we have a question. Should the wild yak be listed as endangered, just as the Tibetan antelope is? And um, should it be listed as, a, as an endangered species? Uh, China has it listed as a class one protected species, and I think it's also 
in side east, like we talked of earlier, uh, there are only, I would guess, about 15, 20,000 left. And they can only exist where there are no people because they will come in and hybridize with domestic yak and you lose the purity of the wild species. What happens is during the mating season in summer, the big wild yak bulls, they come into the domestic herd and beat up these puny domestic males and run away with the females. And that is, doesn't make them popular with the herdsmen. <laughs> I bet not. Another question we have from Bill Rosenbaum. He says, in some areas of research, politics impacts the results of studies. Is the same thing sometimes true in conservation research? You mean it's pos makes a, has a positive impact? In, he, I think his example was a negative one that in cigarette research found that secondhand smoke was not dangerous to non-smokers. So positive or negative, have you seen it on both ways? Well, uh, it can be negative on the local population in that if you make a reserve somewhere and throw out the local people, they will resent it because they don't have access to the resources. They may have been hunting there, they may have been or cutting fuel wood or whatever. So it, that can be negative. And one of the big challenges in conservation is to try to help the communities economically set up programs so that livelihood continues and at the same time you protect the wildlife and especially the environment in which it lives. And that's a challenge which is a local challenge often. You can't make a blanket statement. You have to try to find out locally what do the people want, do they, what are their problems, how can you help them, uh, and how can they help themselves. And that's a major issue in conservation. Dr. Shallow, we have our first phone call of the evening, and the phone caller is Andrea. Andrea, go ahead with your question for George Schaller. Dr. Scheller, my question is about Tiru. What made you first suspect that the Tiru were being slaughtered for their fur? What made you first suspect that the Tiru were being slaughtered for their fur? Uh, in the late 80s, I saw a lot of local people slaughtering them, selling the skin to middlemen who plucked the uh, wool out and put them into sacks and that's the last I knew what happened to it. I didn't, they didn't know what, all they knew is that traders would come and take it away. And then actually a wool trader in California contacted me and says in Kashmir, all this wool is showing up, bag after bag. Uh, do you know anything about it? Well, things clicked. And uh, it was a major fashion industry and now it is still going on, but it is much reduced because the international community is enforcing it more, and uh, China has an approaching patrol that tries to reduce it. And in some areas, in my counts, the Chiru are increasing in numbers again. So again, uh, but it's long-term monitoring where you find out what's happening.